Hey guys, welcome back to the Hash Raptor YouTube channel. I hope everyone is doing great. Today we're going to be talking about the summer heat that is rolling in right now here in the south. Now, for those of you that have been watching the channel for a while, you know that I'm in the Carolinas, right on the North Carolina, South Carolina border. And right now, we are battling a heat wave. The next few days, we will get a slight reprieve, but it's pretty clear. I think I am plus 14 GPUs, up 14 GPUs, let's say, from where I was last summer. And it's pretty clear that we're at a tipping point here and we've got to put some additional measures in place to battle the heat. So I've got everything really disheveled right now. I've got, if you look right here, this shelving unit that's normally up against the wall of the shed there is pulled out and we've got some things scattered around here. I've got an 8,000 BTU air conditioner in here that we're going to experiment with just a little bit. That's maybe going to be a little bit problematic but and we've got a fish tank and some mineral oil so over the next couple of videos you're going to see a variety of experimentation that we're going to be running through in here trying to find the best options that are available now let me just say right up front for a lot of the new viewers that have been tuning in i always get the question for people that haven't seen the playlist for the mining shed how this was all put together from the beginning one of the things that I do battle with here is the fact that I am in a community with an HOA. Because I always get the comments, hey, why don't you add two or three more fans in there? And I, I might add one more, but I'm trying other options first to see if I can gain some efficiencies here. Uh, because I, I want to be respectful of my neighbors. I don't want to create a lot of noise pollution. I don't want to get any calls from the HOA, but I want to do my due diligence first. And quite frankly, I want to, I want to try to learn through this whole process. I want to learn the best ways to try to do all of this. So I'm going to talk to you today about some of the things that I am about to start doing and what you're going to see uh, as we begin experimenting here. So for example, the first thing we've got this shelving unit pulled out right here. And one of the things that I want to try is we have this window right behind here and all of the air that's being pulled from this vent up we get a lot a lot of air current being pulled across into the exhaust that's behind me right now and so i wanted to experiment a little bit and see if that air was pulled through these shelving units pulled through and pushed out the exhaust behind me how would that help temperatures and you can see we've got the dark trooper our newest rig build down here it's got the fans on the back that's pulling and pushing air this direction across the front. And that's the way we've got all of our rigs set up in here. We've got Rogue One pulling air from the back. We've got fans along the back side here pulling air and pushing it out the front. And again, that's how it's set up with all of these. So I'm toying with the idea of trying to bring these shelving units out and create some small rows across here where air is pulled completely from this side all the way across the room through the shelving units. And I didn't do that from the beginning, but you know, I was thinking about it. For those of you that have seen the Bits Be Trippin mining farm, you know that if, if I have everything pictured right in my head, that they have large rows of shelving units and all the GPUs and the air is pulled from one side to the other, similar to what I'm talking about designing here. So they have an exhaust fan on one side, let's say it's this side over here, and then they have uh, intakes on this side, which is kind of my small design here. And then they've got rows of shelves. So the reason I resisted this at first is because the cool air that's coming across these cards is getting heated, and then it would go to the next row, which would get heated, and then the next row that gets heated. And I mean, best that I can tell, those guys are just about the best in the business at what they do. And I haven't heard any complaints of that kind of design. So I am gonna experiment with that a little bit. I'm gonna start on that right here today. Now, let me go ahead and say right up front, I know I've really talked about not wanting to do an air conditioning unit at all before. And I have a friend that actually did some BTU calculations 
And to properly cool all of the heat that's being expelled in here, it's estimated I probably would really need about 30 to 35,000 BTU. So my expectation is this is not gonna put a dent in anything. Uh, I just wanna try it. I've, I've been asked several times over the past couple of years to give this a shot. So this is a smaller unit, again, 8,000 BTU. What I think I may do is do some testing with it on this side, the fresh air side, and just see if it, if it pushes just a small amount of cool air across the shelves. Sure, it's eventually gonna get heated, but then it would be exhausted. And we're not trying to insulate this, we're trying to con control the airflow. So I'm gonna experiment a little bit with that. And then, the, you know, the big test that I'm most excited about, I thought I was gonna get to this, a couple of weeks ago is the mineral oil test and we have to take some precautions on how we uh, submerge our gear in here uh, as time goes by because uh, reports are you can actually damage some gear but yeah that's that's what we're up against and let me show you one of the first things I'm going to be doing here today you can see I've got this Govi temperature sensor here on the back wall that I've used for well, since the beginning since we built this uh, shed and I've been using that to just monitor the overall temperature in the back part of the shed behind all of the mining rigs. And then I've got this Inkbird thermostat over here, which controls the fan speed. And this is always a little bit different. It's usually it's slightly cooler because it is at the exhaust side right here and it gets pretty good airflow. But here's what's interesting. Notice that that's at 103. Since I pulled these shelves out just a little bit, I angled this shelf this way just a little bit so the fans are blowing more toward the exhaust. These are pushing hot air across here. This has now become the lower of the temperature sensors right here. So normally this would maybe be at 104 right now, but it's actually lower than the Inkbird, which I see is kind of promising. And one other thing that I added, I got a Govi sensor. This is the Wi-Fi sensor right here, and I got this on sale. So it does the same thing as the Govi that's on the wall over there, except that that one's just Bluetooth. This one is uh, Wi-Fi. So anywhere that I'm at, I can get a reading off of this. If I'm on vacation, anywhere I am in the world, I can get a reading off of this. Uh, and the Inkbird is Wi-Fi also. The reason I don't do all just these is because I think they're 30 to $40 and I got it on sale for maybe like 15, but the Bluetooth versions are 10 or $11. So what I did, uh, because I want to learn as we go here about how the temperature of each rig is being affected with all of the testing, everything we do, I bought a bunch of these, one of these Bluetooth Govi sensors for every rig. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna calibrate all of them here in just a minute, and I'm just gonna set them inside each rig. So as I move shelves, I'll be able to look in the app and see how each individual rig, at least just right inside the frame, is being affected by airflow and you know the temperature across the entire room here. That's everything I've got going on right now, but at the moment it is me and the mining shed versus the heat. This heat that I'm battling is only from 12 p.m. to about 6 or 7 p.m. so six or seven hours a day that on the hottest days it's usually at 90 plus degrees Fahrenheit here in the south where I start having these extreme issues the rest of the time the mining operation is fantastic just like it always was everything is running super solid all right so here's all of the Govi Bluetooth sensors that I purchased Again, 10 or $11 each, but I think it's gonna be well worth it to get an idea of the temperature within each rig frame as we move things around and you know try things out. So one of these will sit inside the frame of every rig. But what I wanna do is get them all fired up here on the table and try to calibrate them to make sure that they are all at the exact same readings. All right, here we are guys, 24 hours later, and I have all of these for the most part, synced up pretty well. I've got to make a few more minor tweaks, a few decimal places here or there, and then I need to sync them up individually via Bluetooth and get them named. I'll name each one of them by the rig that it's going into and then get it put into place. All right, I've got them all synced up and I've got them all labeled and they are all synced to the iPhone as well 
all the temperatures are within about a tenth of a degree, maybe two tenths of one another. So time to put them into production. All right, so here we are back in the shed and I have put in the GoV hygrometers. And uh, anyway, they're all on the rigs and immediately I noticed something I'm gonna show you here uh, after just a few minutes of having them up and collecting some data. But I am aware and mindful of the fact that the positioning with inside each rig may affect the results. So I'm gonna have to play around with that a bit. But as you can see here, in different areas within the shed, we're getting some different results. And it could be the way that the uh, air is coming off of one of the GPUs. So I'm gonna try to play around with the positioning where each one is allocated to each rig, where it's gonna sit. But the obvious one, let me show you this. As you get over here, this is the solo rig. And that heat buildup is not from that. This is where that heat buildup is coming from. It's the Vader rig. Actually, I never knew that the ambient temperature around the rig was this hot. And I did try moving this around just temporarily here. It's been up and running for maybe 30 minutes and uh, it's still equally bad, kind of however I position it. It was pretty obvious that I need to make some adjustments on this 5700 rig because this is notoriously a hot rig and these are hot cards. The memory on these cards gets pretty hot. All right, so here we are inside Vader and you can see all of the fans are above 90%, uh, right at around 100%. And if we come over here to the cards, you can see the memory on these cards is all in the 90 degrees. The uh, 5700 XT is at 98 degrees. And I've seen those before on the hottest days get up there at the higher temperatures, but this ambient temperature, I did not know that's where we were around this rig. It just gives me pause looking at you know this data again, revisiting it. And I think what I'm gonna do is take some action. I'm probably gonna remove all of these sort of mid-tier fans that are on here that look cool and just put some you know, really high CFM fans on here, at least the best ones I can get for now. I'll also try to create a little bit more of a control base for this air conditioner unit that we're testing with and uh, see if that's gonna stay permanently or not, if it's got any place in the shed here. I almost forgot to mention, guys, that a couple days ago, I had this EVGA 1200 watt power supply. I, I don't know what happened. It just burned out, I guess. I, I came in the rig wouldn't do a remote restart. This is the Jawa rig. And it was right in the middle of just dealing with everything here. And uh, yeah, the rig wouldn't restart. So fortunately I had bought some extra parts during the crypto winter and dropped in this replacement 1200 watt P2. And so we're back up and running. I'm still trying to figure out root cause on that one. All right, so I have powered on that AC unit and it's been running for maybe 15, 20 minutes, I'm guessing. And the temperature, I know that flashes on the camera, but the temperature inside has dropped a few degrees. It's 95.2 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna go ahead and test as quick as I can before the uh, outside temperature rises over the course of a few hours. I'm gonna go ahead and test turning this AC off and just see in the next 10 or 15 minutes here how the temperature inside the shed changes. Hey, I just wanted to show you this real quick beside this air conditioning unit. This is what I was mentioning when I did a touch test on this wall right here. So here, we're gonna shoot the wall beside this and it's what, 89, 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Check this out. 118 degrees at the exhaust. If I come up the wall, 120, 121. I mean, it's hot, folks. And if I use this permanently, which again, I don't know that I will, I'm gonna have to find a way to really get this exhaust um, installed properly and exhausting away from the shed because at the moment there's a little crack over here from where this frame doesn't fit exactly and you can feel some heat building up in this corner. Okay, well, so it's about an hour later and we are at 98.7 degrees Fahrenheit with all of the rigs running and with the air condition turned off. So, yeah, I mean, it would seem on the first test that that air condition is helping maybe by a few degrees. All right, just another quick test here. Uh, the air condition's been turned back on 
for about 20 minutes and we're down to 96 degrees. So, I don't know, looking pretty favorable for the air conditioning unit. All right, so I wanted to run a quick test to see how much electricity this thing is actually pulling at the wall over here. And in our Emporia view, we have got the total shed right now at about 7,557 watts or 7.5 7.53 kilowatts it's bouncing a little bit there so I'm gonna power this thing off and we're gonna see how much this drops from 7.5 6.5 yeah so already over a thousand watts which is kinda what I was thinking that's what I was expecting with this thing running only for the hottest days uh, intermittently for about seven hours on those days between 12 p.m. and 7 p.m. I think it might be just to come on and take the edge off but yeah thousand watts man that's a whole nother rig right there but yeah all right guys that'll do it for this video thanks so much for watching we'll see you in part two take care all right everything's looking much better we are up and running pretty smooth I've kind of been putting this off. I've been a little bit nervous about it, but here we go. It's time to dunk some GPUs. Yeah.